Hello, my name is Derek, and today I'm going to be teaching you about adding fillets and chamfers to your sketches. So right now, I am in a sketch on the front plane. If you don't know how to get to that, I'll back out of this and I'll show you. So at the top here of your uh, part window, you'll see this button that says Create Sketch Plane. So if you click that button, then it's asking you to select a face or surface or plane. So I like to come over here to my Reference tab. I navigate up, I can see the various planes. I like the XY front plane for most of my work, so I'll stay there. Now I'm going to draw a simple rectangle. So I'm going to hit the control button to convert it to a center rectangle. Alright. And here's my, my rectangle. So now, if you come up to the top left of your screen, you'll see two buttons, the fill it and the chamfer button. So let's go ahead and use the fillet button first. So I'm going to select this line. It says identify first line. Now it says identify second line. I'm going to select this line. And it's telling me to give me a radius. So I'll give it a radius of 2.5. And now you can see there's a small fillet at the edge of that corner. So I'll select this line and this line here. Telling me radius 2.5, so now I can just hit enter and it'll store the last value I used. I'll hit that one. This time I'm going to say 5.0. You can see that it's a larger radius. Right. Now I'll hit this line and I use point, 5 point and I'll hit the green check. Alright, now I'll hit the X to close out that tool. So now I have my rectangle that has all filleted edges. If I grab the line dimension tool, and I select that fillet, and I hit enter, and I hit OK, it shows it as a radius 2.5 fillet. If I come down here, it shows it as a radius 5 fillet. Right. So I'm going to exit out of this sketch. It's going to say cancel sketch. I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to hit sketch plane to activate the sketch tool again. I'm going to go back into my front plane. So now I'm going to do the same thing over, but with chamfers, because chamfers are a little bit harder. Alright, so if I identify line 1 and chamfer position. Alright, so it's telling me width of the chamfer 1. So I'll put 2 point, and it says identify line 2. Width of the chamfer 2, I'll put 2 point. Alright, so now I have this 45 degree chamfer. Now, chamfer is a little bit harder because you can select them multiple uh, multiple different ways and you can also create different angle chamfers. So if I come over here with the chamfer tool and I select line one as this top line right here, it remembers the width of the chamfer. So I'll hit OK. I'm going to hit line two. Well, this time I'm going to change that width to three. And you can see how now it's slightly off. So width of the first chamfer, when I select this first line, what it means is the distance from that theoretical edge that no longer exists right here, back is where the chamfer starts. So when I select this line, distance from that intersection again, it, uh, back is where it starts. So I have two inches over here, I have three inches over here. And that creates an off-kilter chamfer, as we can see. But sometimes it's useful if you want uh, a specific size pin slot, or something of that nature. I'm going to go back down here. It says width of the chamfer 2. I'll up it to 3. And then chamfer 2 position. This one is already 3, so I'll just hit enter. You can see a 3x3 three three chamfer again. I'm going to exit out of my tool. Alright, so that's the chamfer tool, and that's how to create and use chamfers and sketch, uh, fillets in your sketch. Uh, this saves some time later. Instead of using the fillet and chamfer tool on your extrusions, now you can extrude this. I'll give it a distance of 10. Alright. Now you can see there's already this chamfer over here. And I didn't have to create it on a solid face. Or on a, on a solid. I could do it in the sketch and then extrude it. So it's, it's two different ways of doing things. Sometimes it's easier to use it in the sketch. Sometimes it's easier to use it on a solid, but now you know how to do both. So.
Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our videos if you want to stay in the know. Thank you.